Welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I hope you guys are doing well. Today I am going to be telling you guys all about how I was able to save up to $7,000 in college, how I lost all of that money, and also I'm going to be giving you guys all of my tips on how I save and budget. So before we start, you know in my girl chat videos I always have the lights behind me. I broke them and I'm really sad about it so I'm gonna have to try to find some new lights because I really like the lights behind me and you guys know I always have a drink with me I'm drinking water today we're trying to keep it nice and um, hydrated so that's what I'm drinking this is my Starbucks cup I have millions of these and I just try to pick out the best looking Starbucks cups and buy them okay so get your drink get your food whatever you want to get get your notepad because i'm going to be giving you a lot of tips and let's get started okay so my tips on budgeting and saving are mainly for people who are just starting out who don't really know much about how to do it or what goes into it it's mainly for people in college who have just started making money and they want to be able to save if you are an expert and you want to leave tips down below go right ahead but this video is for beginners people who have never saved before they just opened their savings account and they need some help okay so if you have not seen my previous girl chat video where i give all of my tips about surviving your 20s you should definitely go check that out um i give a brief story about why or how i really started saving i've always been a saver i've always been frugal i've always put away money since i've ever received money like whenever my parents would give me money or whoever like you get money for Christmas I will always put some away so I've always been this way I've always been a saver but I really started saving in college when I first got my refund checks from my financial aid so if you don't know when you go to college and you get full financial aid and you have money left over it's called a refund check and they usually send that to you in a check or through direct deposit to your bank account and whenever I would get my refund checks I will save the bulk of it so I will put a few hundred in my checking account and put the rest of it in my savings and I was saving about twelve hundred dollars each semester I always wanted to make sure that I was putting in at least a thousand dollars because I just had this thing about reaching ten thousand by the time I graduated I didn't make it because I was spending money but but I still think I, I did pretty good also while I was in college I was not working so I think it's really fortunate that I was able to not work and just survive <laughs> off of my refund checks once i started receiving this amount of money i wasn't asking my parents for money or anything like that i just started you know paying for everything myself um and also i live with my parents so i didn't have to pay bills i was just stacking my money like saving every single cent that i could and living below my means and really only buying what I need to. I still had enough to go out with my friends and stuff like that, but I wasn't spending a lot of money. Eventually, I lost basically all of that money because I decided after college that I needed to take some time off before I started working. As I also explained in my previous girl chat, I was very depressed in college. It took the life out of me um it scarred me to be honest <laughs> and i needed time off and my family everyone was like no once you stop you would never go back it'll be hard for you to find a job it'll be hard for you to go back to school this is just my advice to people who are just coming out of college and it treated you the way it treated me if you feel in your heart <laughs> and in your soul and in your mind and in your body that you need to take some time do it do not allow people in your space to 
to try to convince you that you have to keep going because you can get burned out. There is such a thing as you getting burned out from just moving too fast. If you need a break, take the break and then and then get back up. So that's what I did. I took my time off. I was also able to travel. So I went to, I think that time around, before I even graduated, I used some of that money to go to California, which I do not regret at all. I love traveling. So basically I spent my money on traveling and just surviving. And I don't regret it at all. I feel like God put me in that position because I know that God knows everything. So he knows that college was going to be a hard one for me. And he knew that I was going to need some time. So I feel like he prepared me financially for that time off. So I used to regret it. I used to regret that I had all this money. And I just blew it. Like I don't know where it went. Until I thought about it that way. Like I was able to take time off and live comfortably after college. A lot of people don't get that chance. A lot of people don't have that opportunity. So I look at it like that. I look at it as a blessing because I feel so much better than I felt in college. Um, a lot of things happened at the college that I needed a strong mental for and I was able to overcome those things without being depressed and stressed out again. So every time I think like, dang, I had all this money and now it's gone. I just think about how much God has blessed me and put me in positions to be financially stable, to take breaks. So that's how I lost all my money. Um, I took a break after college and I was able to live my life. So even while having this amount of money and being able to take a break and stuff like that, I still feel like I should have been able to handle my money better. I think that as a college student still living at home, not having to pay bills and stuff like that, um, I feel like I could have saved a little bit more. I could have been smarter with my money. I should have known exactly where my money went because to be honest, I really don't know. I know I was buying everything for myself, but there's no big purchases that I have that I could be like, oh yeah, I bought this, you know? So in this video, I want to give you guys all of the tips, everything that I've learned in my 20s about saving my money and also i'm going to give you guys all my tips about how i learned to budget so as far as saving i used to just save however much i wanted whatever money that i received i will put at least half of it in the bank now that i have had jobs and i've had experiences with saving i now know that that is not the best way to save. So I did my research and I've also asked around with some of my friends to see how they save. And I also consulted with my mom to see what she's learned. So I've come to the conclusion that saving at least one third of your check is a reasonable amount to save. So every check that I receive, I always save at least one third. One thing that also helped me with saving, just to make sure that I'm doing it with every check, every amount that I receive, I'm always saving. I turned on a feature on my bank app, which is auto save. So this feature on the app allows me to set it to where a certain amount of money will come out of my check that is above a certain amount. That didn't sound right. So let's say I make $1,000 every two weeks. Every check that comes into my account that is above $1,000, so $1,000 or more, it has to take out $300 and transfer it to my savings account. So every check that I receive, whether it's $1,500, $1,200, $1,000, as long as it's above $1,000, I'm always saving $300 automatically from it. It just directly goes to my savings account. I don't have to manually put it in. It just automatically does it every time I get a check above $1,000. Let's say I receive a check for $2,000. The app will automatically 
automatically transfer the $300 as it's supposed to, but I will always go in and add some more. If there's no extra expenses that I need to pay, I will always add more to my savings account because let's face it, I don't need a thousand extra dollars in my checking account. I don't need that much. <laughs> so that's one tip. Always save at least one third of your check. Check with your bank app to see if they have some type of feature like this, like an auto save feature where you can automatically save money, um, transfer it to your savings account whenever you make a certain amount. And the third thing that has been very helpful for me, which I just started doing last year, is the Digit app. This app is just like a savings account, basically. It's connected to your bank account and it just takes out money every day and transfers it to the app so you have it sitting there and you don't even know it. So it will take out like a dollar fifty cents Monday, two dollars on Tuesday, a dollar thirty five cents on Wednesday. Like it's like little tiny amounts of money just transferred into a whole separate account that you don't even know and then by the time you check it you've accumulated all of this money and you basically have like a side of cash left over, like petty cash, just cash for a rainy day. Let's say a bank account is like dead empty, right? <laughs> and you just need something. You have this cash just sitting there that I honestly forget that I have it. Like I just go in there and I'm like, whoa. I have $200 just sitting here and it's like the best feeling because it's I I like to feel secure in knowing that I have multiple amounts of money in different places like that just makes me feel secure like if this pile runs out I have another pile if that one runs out I have another pile like I just want to feel secure knowing that there's money sitting in places you know so if you've never tried the digit app I think it's really good they have a feature for the rainy day so they can put money into that section for a rainy day I use it to save up for my trips because I like to travel and I like to have cash you know just saving for maybe my ticket or my hotel my Airbnb or maybe just cash to take with me on the trip I put money aside for that and they also have a feature for credit cards so if you want to save up money to pay off your credit cards you can also use the digit app for that so I definitely recommend it I'll leave my code down below so you can use it and you gain five dollars if you use my code also I wanted to talk really quickly about buying stocks so this is an area of finances that I don't know a lot in but um, I've been reading up on it and trying to study it a little bit more because I want to really get into it. So an app that is really good for beginners is called Robinhood and on that app you can buy stocks and trade and stuff like that. I will always recommend doing your research before you get into something like this but as a beginner you can start with Robinhood and buy some stocks there. But I also feel like stocks are a way of putting money in places and having money for you know various reasons I just again I like to have money in different places and I feel like stocks are another way to do that so saving is one thing saving is how you're able to keep your money when you're making your money budgeting is a totally different ball game budgeting is how you know where your money is going when you spend it so budgeting was really the main reason of how I lost a lot of money because I didn't know where my money was going. I didn't know how to spend properly. I was overspending for a lot of things that I didn't really need to and it wasn't until I got a job and I had money coming in that I was able to really understand how to budget effectively. So one day I sat down with pen and paper and my computer and I decided you know what I'm gonna be smarter about this I'm an adult I need to learn how to save effectively and also I need to know exactly where my money is going because my mom can't be asking me where's where's your money and I can't tell her <laughs> that's just embarrassing so the first thing you want to do is create your current budget 
So you're going to write out your total income. Your total income is the amount of money that is coming in for that month. I later broke it down into a bi-weekly budget just so I know exactly what was coming out of my check every time that I received it. So when I when I was receiving a check bi-weekly, I would budget for that specific check. I just liked to be more specific, especially with dates, which I'm going to get into next. So the next thing you want to do is write down all of your monthly expenses along with the dates that you have to pay them. So that can be your bills, your credit card payments, your reoccurring expenses like Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix, stuff like that. The next thing you want to do is group your expenses into specific categories. So for me, I have savings, bills and credit card payments, reoccurring expenses like Hulu, Netflix and Disney Plus. Then I have my clothes, uh, necessities like lotion, deodorant, feminine products, stuff like that. Also my upkeep like my hair and my nails and then also my everyday purchases and spending money. Once I grouped my expenses into categories I wrote down the amount that I would usually spend on these categories. So my savings I already knew that I was saving $300 from each check. My bills and credit card payments, I would list all of the minimum payments on my credit cards because those are essentially the only bills that I had. The reoccurring expenses like Netflix and Hulu and now I have Disney Plus. And then the amount of money that I would spend on clothes, necessities and my hair, and my nails and also the amount of money that I would spend on everyday purchases and spending money. So like when I would go to Starbucks or buy lunch or go out to eat or whatever I was doing, how much money I would be spending for that month, how much money I would usually spend for the month. The next thing I did was eliminate all of the services that I do not use and that I do not need. So when I was budgeting, I realized that I had streaming accounts that I was not using. So I mainly had Netflix and Hulu and I would use Netflix sometimes, but I was not using Hulu for about two years and money was just coming out of my account and I had no clue. So I went ahead and I canceled my subscription and I made sure that that money was no longer coming out of my account. You're probably saying it's $7.99. I'll probably use it again sometime. No. If you have not used a streaming service between three and six months, cancel the subscription and delete the app because you're not going to use it and you're wasting money every month paying for something that you're not using. I feel like someone is stealing from me whenever that happens. So I decided to keep my Netflix account and cancel my Hulu account and now I have Disney Plus and I'm happy with those two because I actually use them. Um, I might be canceling my Netflix account soon because I have not used it in a while, but I use my Disney Plus account. I love Disney Plus. <laughs> so the next tip that I have might be a little hard for some people. Um, it was a little hard for me because I kind of feel like I'm a little high maintenance. <laughs> I like nice things. I like things to be done well. Um, I don't mind paying more for something that I really like and I know is going to be done well. So the next thing I had to do was analyze the areas in which I was overspending and create a limit. I don't like limits. So some ways that I had to do that was with travel. So I Uber everywhere. <laughs> I have like a serious uh, issue with Uber. I don't like to get on public transportation if I don't have to. Um, the only, like the main reason I take public transportation is to get to work. If I don't have to get to work or if I'm not going to Manhattan, I'm not taking the bus, I'm not taking the train. And I live in New York, so public transportation is normal. Like that's how we get around. Um, I don't want a car to be honest, but I do want someone to drive me around. I know it's bad, but that's how I feel. Like I just, I don't want to drive myself. 
So what I did with Uber, um, if it was above a certain amount to go somewhere, I wouldn't take it. I would get on the bus or I would get on the train. Thank God I didn't have to do that a lot because I would always have discounts on my Uber and I wouldn't be going far. So I'm never like always going to Manhattan or going to Queens. I'm from Brooklyn, we don't go to the Bronx. So I also had to cut back on buying Starbucks every morning and buying lunch every day at work. Um, Starbucks was my addiction, hence why I have a million cups. But I decided, first of all, that's not healthy to have a caramel macchiato every morning, so I used to limit myself maybe two times a week, three times a week, but not the entire week. So I was saving almost six seven dollars a morning and I was also being just a little bit healthier by not having so much sugar so yeah wherever you can cut back make sure you do that groceries is always another option that you can save on instead of just going to the grocery store and spending your money using your stomach buying food using your stomach make a list throughout the week of all the things that you will need take that list to the grocery store and only buy what's on that list okay don't go shopping around oh maybe i'll try this no stick to your list and also make sure you guys are downloading the apps to your grocery store so you can use the coupons when you get there also try to find a cheaper grocery store that still has all the products that you need so groceries are like a big thing that i see that people spend a lot of money on but if you do it smart you can save your money so now that you have created your current budget we're going to go ahead and create our new budget so the first thing you want to do again is write down your total income for that month and then you're going to write down all of your expenses along with the adjusted charges that you're going to pay along with the dates that you're going to pay them. And that is it. That is your new budget that you're going to stick by for that month. So now you know exactly where your money is going. You know exactly how much you have to pay for every single expense in your life. And now you know exactly how much money you can save because that chunk of money that you now have left over for your everyday expenses might be a little too much to have in your account and now you can start adding more into your savings account or now you can buy more stocks if you need to or now you can add more money to your digit app. Budgeting shows exactly where your money is going and it shows exactly how much money you have for your everyday expenses to go out, um, go to the club, go to the movies, whatever you want to do. Now you know exactly how much money you have and whenever you think back to that month like dang where did all this money go? I made this amount of money in March and I don't even know where half of it went. Now you know because you know how to budget. What I also recommend is that you keep a copy of your monthly expenses and the dates that you have to pay them in your phone so that it's accessible. You know exactly where to get it whenever um, you have to pay a bill. So that way you can always take a look really quickly to see if there's any changes you have to make and also any payments that you have coming up. It is also very important to continuously update your budget every month to accommodate new expenses and also eliminate old expenses. This way you always know where your money is going. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you were able to learn a little bit about how to start saving and start budgeting and be a little bit more smart with your money in 2020. I'm gonna have a part two to this video which will be all about credit. So I'm gonna be telling you guys all about how I was able to get a 700 credit score before the age of 25 so stay tuned for that video again i hope you guys enjoyed please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one bye i wanna be with you always because that is what my heart says that's what my heart says